Hi everyone, it's Ardeth, and I'm here today on the Ellen Hudson blog and YouTube channel with a look at the new Picket Fence life-changing blending brushes that are now available at ellenhudson.com. Okay, so let's start by looking at the brushes. I have the full package of 10, and you can see that there's lots of sizes. I found that this kind of mid-size one is the one I use the most, and I have multiples for different colors. They may look like they're sponges, but they're actually bristles with these amazingly soft and dense bristles. So now having just told you that the smaller one is the one I use the most, let me show you how easy it is to use the larger ones to get a beautifully smooth blend over a big area, like this full panel of white cardstock. I load up the brush with ink, in this case it's a pale blue, and then I start using circular motions on my craft mat before bringing the brush to the panel. I'm using Nina 80 pound cardstock. Now, I'm going to be using four shades of blue ink in total, and I'm not cleaning the brush at all in between, since I'm going from lightest to darkest. I'll talk about cleaning the brushes later in the video. For my next shade, I follow the same process. Load up the brush, start blending off the panel, and then bring it onto the panel, this time keeping the ink closer to the edges so that the lighter blue is still visible, and an important part of the blend. I'm using a pretty light hand and I'm not using a lot of pressure. You can see that there are no harsh edges or lines in the blending. Moving on to the third shade, again I'm bringing it onto the panel but leaving the previous blending visible. Finally, my darkest shade, which adds a lot of drama. This time I'm using a very light hand because my ink pad is really juicy and the color is dark. And here's my completed background panel. See how it fades from the darkest to clear white in the center, and it seems to glow. Now, moving on to the focal image, I decided to foil it rather than stamping. I used this beautiful rose foiling die from Picket Fence Studios. It's big and full of detail and just begging for some ink blending. I used my Gemini foil press and silver shimmer foil, along with Essentials by Ellen letterpress cardstock, which is thick and gets a great embossed impression. You can see and feel how the pressure of the Gemini created so much dimension. Now I'm using that mid-size brush that I use most of the time and some deep pink ink, and I'm blending it all over, really just to get the flower covered. You can see with this cardstock, it has a rough surface and it's not as easy to get a really smooth and seamless blend, but that's okay because I really want lots of shading on this flower to create some interest. I put more ink down where I think the flower would be darker and less where I want it lighter. And I'm not worried about those edges. There's a cutting die that matches this rose. So although it's looking like a hot mess right now, I promise it will improve. Okay, a word about cleaning. Right after I use a brush, I get a scrap piece of paper and I rub as much ink out of the brush as I can. As I said, I have multiples of this size brush for different color families, but I found it's good not to let too much ink get built up in the brushes. When I'm done for the day with a brush, I do the same thing, but this time with a baby wipe to get to that next level of clean. The bristles do clump together a bit when they're wet, but they dry overnight and they're ready to work perfectly again. Next, I'm using a smaller brush and some fuchsia ink to start to lay down some shadows. Having the smaller brushes is really helpful when you want precision in your ink placement. The smaller the brush, obviously, the more precise you can be. But of course, it's not quite like coloring with a colored pencil or marker. It's quite a bit looser. Another quick clean on the computer paper to get most of the ink out of the brush, and it's time to move on. Next, I used a very small round brush and some dark purple ink to really add the deepest shadows and some drama. You can see the rose start to take on some dimension, although those messy edges make it hard to see how beautiful it is. Time to cut it out. I line up the matching outline die and run it through my Gemini. So here are the two pieces together. I had intended to make just one card for this video, but my clean and simple loving heart found this overwhelming, in a beautiful way. So I made two cards. To finish the first card, I foiled a Picket Fence Studios dandelion onto the blue background, cut it out with its matching die, and popped it up. 
The sentiment is from the Today is All About You stamp set. To finish the second card, I stamped a sentiment from Stand in the Sunshine onto a square white card base. I added a partial black layer for some contrast and I popped the rose up on top of it. Pick and Fence Studio's life-changing blending brushes really make it easy to create a smooth, beautiful blend and they can be used to create texture as well. If you enjoyed this video, please give us a thumbs up below and if you want even more inspiration, please subscribe to this channel. Thanks so much for watching. See you next time.